Hey everybody, welcome or welcome back to the channel. Uh, today we got something kind of special. I got something in the mail. So I got a brand new laptop and I figured this would be a great opportunity to actually show you how I build a professional penetration testing laptop. And also along the way, we'll talk about how we can use this to do penetration testing labs. So there's a lot to cover, so let's just get right into it. So the first step in creating a professional penetration testing laptop is to make sure you've got the right device. Uh, part of the challenge is making sure it has the right CPU, make sure that it has enough memory, and that it has, in this case, uh, SSD is my recommendation, SSD hard drive. So what is enough? All right, so my recommendation is at least 16 gigs worth of memory, an i7 or better, and then also, like I said, an SSD, the larger the better. I don't think you can get too big, the reason why I like the SSD drives is that it gives me the highest read and write performance and uh, that really impacts your ability to perform while you're on site with the customer. You don't want anything to slow you down when you're doing a penetration test and an SSD card can really help speed things up. You also need to make sure that the system is able to do virtualization uh, if you're going to use it as a lab. If you're just going to put on something like Kali Linux, you don't necessarily have to worry about it. But in our case, we're going to set it up both as a pen test device and as a lab. So in this case, I made sure to get one that allowed virtualization. In this example, we're gonna be using a Dell. I don't wanna talk really about brands. Uh, any laptop that meets those specifications will do. Uh, the thing I wanna point out is that this is an Intel chip and the Apple, a lot of my uh, peers like to use Apple uh, MacBooks to do penetration testing, but there is a challenge with the new M1, M2 chip versus Intel. Not gonna get into the specifics, but just be aware to do your research and make sure that you get the laptop that you want and that meets your particular needs. So let's talk about operating systems. If you're going to use your system solely as a penetration testing platform and you don't care about the original operating system, the solution is to go with like Kali Linux or something along those lines, a dedicated operating system for penetration testing. In my case, I'm going to use it as a lab as well. And the reality is in my world that I often need access to a lot of Microsoft products during the day, during the actual penetration test. So I just leave the Microsoft operating system on the system and then I ins install virtualization software and then I install Kali on top of that. Uh, so in this case, it's going to be Microsoft uh, Windows 11 with a virtual software that has Kali on it. And we'll get into the specifics and I'll walk you through all of that here in just a second. The first thing I'm gonna do is something that usually isn't mentioned, is that in this case, because I'm going to use uh, Microsoft Windows, I wanna create an installation disk, a thumb drive, that allows me to reinstall Windows back onto the system to the default installation state. The reason why I wanna do that is because after every penetration test, I need to make sure that I sanitize the system and make sure that this isn't going to be exposing customer information when I go to the next site, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so let's go ahead and create a bootable thumb drive for the laptop using Windows 11. Uh, as I mentioned, there's an easy way to do this. Uh, Microsoft provides a web page that we can go to and get started right away. So let me go ahead and get this going. Uh, so the first thing we need to do is go to their website so we're gonna to go to the Microsoft website. So it's microsoft.com software-download slash Windows 11. All right, we'll scroll all the way down to the bottom and there's an option to create some uh, media, installation media. So we'll go ahead and do that. Select the thumb drive and let it do its thing. Okay. So while it's doing that, just let me go over it one more time. So we're creating this thumb drive to be able to reboot and reinstall the Windows operating system on this, on this computer, on this laptop, in order to make sure that we have a sanitized system between engagements, 
right? So from a professional perspective, this is a critical step uh, that oftentimes uh, consultants just don't do for whatever reason, um, but it makes the most sense to ensure that there's no risk to your customers because you will be compromising their environments. You'll be collecting sensitive data onto your system. You wanna make sure that it's brought back down to a original state where there's no customer data once you concluded the entire engagement. So that's why we're doing this. Okay, system says that the USB flash drive is ready. Let me go ahead and finish that up. And then I'm going to remove my drive. And there, I have an entire Windows 11 operating system now on my thumb drive that I can use to bring this system back to a sanitary state. So the other advantage is that if I screw something up on this system, I have a way to bring it back. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is actually install the virtualization software. So what I'm gonna do is do a search for VirtualBox and then download for Windows. Windows 11 is what we're after. Stay signed out. Go to the downloads page, Windows hosts, and you can see that it's starting to download our VirtualBox. So let's go ahead and install it. We can click the defaults on pretty much all of this. And then just let it do its thing. We'll go ahead and start it and we'll ignore it for a minute. So the next thing we need to do is download Kali Linux for VirtualBox. Click on the virtual machines. So we have VirtualBox. We'll go ahead and download it. Okay, once it's completed, I actually like to move the image into its own VM folder. That way I can have all the ISOs that I wanna use in one location so I'm not hunting for them. Okay, now I have a Kali Linux image in a folder called Virtual Machines. So since we downloaded the VirtualBox image instead of an ISO file, all we have to do is click the Add button and uh, it'll be easy peasy. Okay, we see here that we've got the Kali Linux 2023.2 VirtualBox for AMD 64. So we'll select that, open it, and then we can see what it's been given as far as uh, assets. So we can see that there is, um, it's dedicated two processors and two gigs worth of memory, which is fine to get started. But we have the ability to change that, so let's go ahead and change it for a professional penetration testing laptop. Uh, if you're doing this just as a lab, what you get for the basic install is perfectly fine, so you don't need to change anything. But for my system, I want to upgrade it, give it a little bit more memory and extra cores. So let's go ahead and make those modifications now. So we'll go to settings, we'll go to system, and then we can change the base memory here. So you can see here that the base memory is at uh, two gigs. So I'm gonna go ahead and double that. So for the processor, I'm gonna give it quite a few more. So I'm gonna go up to eight, eight cores, All right? So then once I'm done, I'll just click okay, save the information. And you can see now that it's got eight processors, four gigs worth of memory, so let's go ahead and actually start it and give you a quick look at what the Kali Linux looks like in the virtual box. So click start. Okay, we can see that Kali Linux is booting up. And there we go. We now have a functioning Kali Linux penetration testing platform in our virtual box. And from here, we can do all of our testing 
all of our lab work uh, simply by logging on here and using this as our attack platform. Okay, once we log in using Kali, Kali as the username and password, uh, it gives us our environment and then we can start playing with all the tools available. Okay, so there we got it. I have a system now that has Kali Linux on it. Uh, it will connect out to the world and I can do all the things that I need to do within a scope of an actual penetration test. So now that I have Kali Linux installed, I can now go and find exploitable, vulnerable images to install into VirtualBox and create my lab. Um, but I wanted to at least show you how to get started, making sure that Kali Linux is loaded up and ready to go so that you can do your penetration testing either as a professional or as a, in a lab environment. Well, congratulations, you've actually created a professional penetration testing system, or you've created a system that allows you to actually practice professional penetration testing in a safe, ethical lab environment. And as always, make sure that when you're using Kali Linux, you're doing it responsibly and ethically. I hope this video is helpful. If you have any questions, I'm more than happy to answer them. Just feel free to leave questions in the comment section below. Um, also, if you found this useful, make sure you like and subscribe. Other than that, thanks for watching and happy hacking.